What's going on, baseball fans? How are we doing? So over the years, we've had a lot of amazing free agent signings, but in this video, I'm going to put together a list of the top 10 greatest free agent signings of all time. Let's get to it. At number 10, I have Adrian Beltre signing with the Texas Rangers in 2011. What a solid player Adrian Beltre was, and I got to experience him for one season with the Red Sox. He had a bad season in his last year with the Mariners, and in 2010, he signed a one-year deal for $10 million, and he took advantage of that one year. In 2010, he hit 321 with a 365 on base, 28 homers, 102 RBIs. He led the major leagues in doubles with 49, ended up getting a nice payday with the Rangers, a five-year deal for $80 million. He averaged 16 million per season and if we actually go to fan graphs he completely outperformed that contract in 2011 he was worth 41.9 million in 2012 41.2 in 2013 36.5 and it just goes on and on i mean this guy even in 2017 his worst year with the rangers um well if you're not counting 2018 but 2017 he was still worth 22.9 million uh, completely outperforming that contract one of the best contracts of all time sure he wasn't able to win a world series but he was able to make it to one um what an amazing player adrian beltray was what a solid signing this was for the texas rangers coming in at number nine i have the mariners signing ichiro in 2001 Back in 2001, the legend of Ichiro began. He signed a three-year deal for $14 million. I mean, today, that is just like pennies today compared to what these guys are getting today. But Ichiro ended up signing with the Mariners in 2001. He was an international free agent. Uh, he had other teams going after him as well. The New York Mets, the Dodgers, and the Angels were going after Ichiro and ended up signing with the Mariners. And oh my, what a career he ended up having. If we take a look at his numbers... Just look at 2001, his first season in the major leagues. He won Rookie of the Year and MVP. Are you kidding me? He hit 350 that year, a 381 on base, 56 stolen bases led the major leagues, 242 hits led the major leagues. This guy had 738 plate appearances in his first year. That is just nuts. Ichiro was absolutely amazing. If we take a look at his years from 2001 to 2011, he averaged a 326 batting average, a 370 on base. He averaged 221 hits per year. Ichiro was easily one of the faces of baseball for many years. This guy was phenomenal. Again, he only signed in the beginning. It was only a three-year deal, but he ended up staying with the Mariners until uh, going to the Yankees later on in his career. But uh, Ichiro, of course, he never was able to win a World Series. They had that phenomenal season in Seattle uh, in 2001, um, where that was one of the greatest teams of all time. And easily, you could say, the best team that never won a World Series. That team was phenomenal, and Ichiro was smack dab in the middle of that. What, a, what an amazing player Ichiro was. Um, he comes in at number nine on my list. Coming in at number eight, I have the Cubs signing John Lester in 2015. I'm not going to lie, this one made me kind of sad because I wanted John Lester to come back to the Red Sox. The Red Sox were trying to bring him back after trading him away to the Oakland A's in 2014. I remember John Henry flew to John Lester's house, tried to convince him to come back to Boston, and he broke my heart. He broke a lot of hearts in Boston, went to the Chicago Cubs, but I completely understood. Hey, this guy, he was just trying to help end a curse with the Chicago Cubs, and boy, did he help out. Oh my goodness, John. John Lester, if we go take a look, in the beginning, I will say this right off the bat, John Lester's, uh, his deal, he definitely performed the best in the beginning of that contract. In 2015, uh, they were able to make it to the playoffs that year, but John Lester, he was phenomenal that year. Uh, only went 11 and 12 with his win-loss record, but he had a 2.92, um, or he had a 3.34 ERA, a 2.92 FIP, uh, nine strikeouts per nine. He was solid in 2015. But 2016 is what gets John Lester at number eight on this list. He was phenomenal that year as well. Uh, if we take a look here in Cy Young voting, he did finish second in Cy Young voting that year. Um, over 200 innings pitched. He went 19-5, and five, right around nine strikeouts per nine again. Uh, he had a 2.44 ERA that year, a 3.41 FIP. And if we take a look at his numbers in the postseason, he was 
phenomenal for the Cubs. Um, taking a look here in the World Series in 2016, um, he just John Lester was always a big game pitcher and helped the Red Sox win a couple of World Series uh, in 2007 and 2013. John Lester always stepped up, and that's what definitely helped him get that big of a contract. And he really helped out the Cubs that year. Um, again, John Lester gets number eight on this list mainly due to the fact that he helped end a 108-year drought with the Chicago Cubs. But if we do take a look here, again, he was really good in those first two seasons with the Cubs. He was worth $38.9 million in 2015, $33.9 million in 2016. But then he just started to kind of drop off from there. 2019, he did pick it back up again after a down 2018. But overall, his best years came in the beginning of that contract. And hey, Helped the Cubs win a World Series, and that is all that matters. Coming in at number seven, I have the Yankees signing Reggie Jackson in 1976. For this one, we're going to go back in time. Reggie Jackson signing in 1976, a five-year deal worth $3.5 million total. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's just whack just hearing that compared to what these players are getting today, uh, how the times have changed. I mean, back then, that was pretty good money. Uh, but Reggie Jackson, he was phenomenal for the Yankees during that time. Uh, if we take a look at his numbers from 1977 to 1981, he was just great with the Yankees. Averaged a 280 batting average, a 371 on base, a 526 slugging average, 29 homers and 92 RBIs per year. But what made Reggie Jackson so good for the Yankees and what made this such a good signing was the postseason. Helped them win two World Series. He was the MVP of the World Series in 1977. That's how he became Mr. October in that series against the Dodgers. Uh, averaged a 450 batting average, a 542 on base, a 1250 slugging. He had a 1792 OPS. Are you kidding me? Five homers, eight RBIs. Uh, phenomenal. Helped them win another World Series in 1978. Uh, I mean, look at look at these numbers: 391 average, a 500 on base, a 696 slugging. Had two homers. I mean, Reggie Jackson, man, what a phenomenal signing for the New York Yankees. Again, helped them win two World Series, won a World Series MVP. You gotta love. At number six, I have the Blue Jays signing Roger Clemens in 1997. This is an interesting one on this list. Roger Clemens, one of the best pitchers of all time. With the Red Sox uh, in his early years in his career, he was phenomenal. Had 13 seasons with the Red Sox, won 192 games, an ERA of 3.06, an FIP of 2.94. Tons of strikeouts, uh, 2,590 strikeouts overall during that time. I mean, you could argue this is a Hall of Fame career in just 13 seasons with the Red Sox. But uh, towards the end of his career with the Red Sox in 1996, uh, it was being talked about that he was hitting the twilight of his career. And he went to Toronto, and this guy was just on a revenge tour. He won back-to-back -back World uh, back to back Cy Youngs with the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm sure they would have loved a couple of World Series as well. Look at the season he had in 1997. He went 21-7, a 2.05 ERA, 264 innings pitched, 292 strikeouts, his fifth was 2.25 are you kidding me uh, that's one of the best pitching seasons of all time to go from 1996 where the owner of the Red Sox is saying that you're in the twilight of your career and then he goes and does that with with, with a team that's in the same division are you kidding me had an amazing 1998 season as well again he won the back-to-back -back Cy Youngs but what makes this contract even better he was traded to the Yankees he demanded a trade went to the Yankees in 1999 ended up helping them win a World Series in 1999, ended up signing a new three-year deal with the Yankees, um, and then he helped them win another World Series in 2000, got back to the World Series in 2001, got back to the World Series in 2003. Roger Clemens, hey, the back-to-back -back Cy Youngs, helping them win a couple of World Series. I mean, Roger Clemens, to me, this is easily one of the best free agent signings of all time. Coming in at number five, I have the Giants signing Barry Bonds in 1993. We're halfway through the list, so let's put the most controversial one smack dab in the middle, Barry Bonds going to the Giants. At the time, it was a six-year, $43.75 million deal. That was actually a record contract at the time. But boy, oh boy, the numbers that this guy went on to put up with the Giants, I mean, 
absolutely mind-boggling these numbers i mean hey minus the the peds i know i just just don't think about those but these numbers are just mind-boggling i mean you all know i mean come on i go to his baseball reference page just to you know give myself you know to make my loins tingle a little bit i mean are you kidding me look at these numbers they're absolutely incredible uh let's take a look at the the first you know that actual six-year deal during that time from 93 to 1998 he averaged a 307 batting average a 445 on base uh, an ops over a thousand he averaged 39 homers and 110 rbis per season he also averaged 32 stolen bases per season this guy was just off the chart ended up staying with the Giants until 2007 ended up becoming the home run king ended up drawing the most walks of all time ended up drawing the most intentional walks of all time he won uh he won an MVP in his first season with the Giants he won four straight MVPs from 2001 to 2004 he set the record for uh most home runs in a single season with 73 I mean what else is there to say the only thing holding Barry Bonds back if he was able to win a World Series that would have been that would have easily put him near the top of this list he just wasn't able to win one he got to a world series uh in 2002 against the angels they fell short in seven games barry bonds hey say what you will about the peds but this guy the numbers this guy put up even in those first you know few years of the giants they were just amazing numbers um i mean again very controversial but for me I'm putting him right in the middle of this list. Coming in at number four, I have the Red Sox signing Manny Ramirez in 2001. Ah, yes, this one is near and dear to my heart. The Red Sox signing Manny Ramirez, eight years, $160 million. That was a massive contract at the time, uh, $20 million per season. That was kind of mind-boggling at the time. Um, you had A-Rod, who ended up signing a even bigger deal a couple of years later but Manny Ramirez this was a huge contract I mean and it was at the point well deserved this was one of the best players in the game with Cleveland from 1993 to 2000 this guy just put up some gaudy numbers he averaged a 313 batting average per season a 407 on base um at the time averaging 30 home runs per season 100 RBIs per season this is one of the best hitters in all of baseball the Red Sox brought him in they needed an upgrade in their lineup and they were just trying to get past the Yankees at that time but if we take a look at the numbers with Manny Ramirez from 2001 to 2008 he ended up getting traded to the Dodgers in 2008 I'll talk about that in a second but this guy was phenomenal for the Red Sox during those years averaged a 315 batting average a 415 on base a 595 slugging 36 home runs per season 115 RBIs per season uh, simply put one of the best hitters in all of baseball history Manny Ramirez was phenomenal was never able to win an MVP but he won, in my opinion, even a better MVP, the World Series MVP for the 2004 Red Sox that broke the curse of the Bambino. Manny Ramirez, during that postseason, he was phenomenal. In 2004, um, that got him the MVP in the World Series. He was fantastic. Hit 412 in that series, a 500 on base, a 588 slugging, had a homer, four RBIs. He was great. Unfortunately for Manny, uh, towards the end of his career, um, you know, just to, or to, uh, towards the end of his Red Sox career, had some issues uh, off the field issues. I mean, his basically his stay just wore out with the Red Sox and uh, he ended up getting traded to the Dodgers. We ended up bringing back Jason Bay in that trade, who ended up doing really good for the Red Sox as well. Um, but Manny Ramirez also helped the Red Sox win a World Series in 2007. So uh, a phenomenal hitter during his years with the Red Sox, helped win two World Series, got a, a World Series MVP. Yeah, there were a lot of shenanigans with Manny Ramirez, Manny being Manny, but to me, this was easily one of the best uh, free agent signings of all time. Coming in at number three, have the Nationals signing Max Scherzer in 2015. No, 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 I'm not talking about the deal that he just signed with the Mets. I mean, I guess it wasn't all that much money, $43 million per season. I mean, that's that's not too much if you ask me, I guess. But I'm talking about the Nationals contract that he signed. Seven years, $210 million. That was $30 million per season. That's a lot of change, but he lived up to the hype. If we take a look at his years uh, with the Nationals from 2015 to 2021, this guy was fantastic. He averaged six wins, uh, oh, six war per season. Um, ended up winning a couple of Cy Youngs back-to-back. -back. He got second place in 2018, third place in 2019, 
third place in 2021. Well, half a season with the Nationals and then half a season with the Dodgers. But I digress. He was phenomenal during this time. If we take a look at the numbers um, during his time with the Nationals from 2015, uh, let's just include 2021 as well. Um, I mean, just fantastic numbers. Ended up uh, just under 100 wins. He had an FIP of 2.87, an ERA of 2.75. He averaged a, about 12 strikeouts per nine. This guy has easily been one of the best pitchers in baseball for a long time. Uh, but most importantly, helped the Nationals win the World Series in 2019. Uh, to me, this is easily, 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 easily one of the best free agent signings of all time. Can he do it again with the Mets? We'll have to wait and see. Coming in at number two, I have the Braves signing Greg Maddox in 1993. I'm just going to say this right off the bat. Greg Maddox is easily one of my favorite pitchers of all time. But with the Atlanta Braves, he was so good. He was so good during that time. From 1993 to 2003, he averaged a six war per season. That is extremely good. But let's go take a look at these numbers from uh, 1993 all the way until 2003. This guy was just fantastic. Uh, he averaged an 18-8 record, a 2.63 ERA, a 2.95 FIP. Greg Maddox was just simply one of the best of all time. Uh, if we take a look, how many Cy Youngs did this guy win? He won three Cy Youngs in a row. He got a fifth place finish in 96, a second place finish in 97, fourth place in 98, uh, third place in 2000. I'll be honest with you. I think um, in the year 1995, I actually think he should have gotten MVP that year. He was just absolutely phenomenal in 1995. Didn't get the MVP, but hey, he won the World Series in 1995. This guy was just phenomenal. One of the best pictures of all time. Hall of Fame, four-time Cy Young winner. Uh, would have loved it if he stayed with the Braves for his whole career. Ended up going to the Cubs in 2004. Uh, kind of bounced around, you know, between the Dodgers and the Padres then. But overall, his time with the, his time with Atlanta was just legendary. And at number one on my list, I have the Diamondbacks signing Randy Johnson in 1999. Simply put, Randy Johnson was one of the most disgusting pitchers of all time, and I mean that in the most flattering way possible. Randy Johnson, the big unit, an absolute legend, Hall of Famer. This guy was the real deal. If we go to his stats from 1990 all the way to 1998, phenomenal. Uh, 133 wins, over 255 starts. He averaged a 15-7 and record during that time. His ERA averaged over those years 3.25, and his FIP was 3.23. He also averaged 11 strikeouts per nine. This was during a time when strikeouts weren't really high. So Randy Johnson was easily just one of the most dominant pitchers during the 90s. And then with Houston, just unbelievable during that time with Houston. He only had 11 starts, but he made the most of them. A 1.28 ERA, 12 and a half strikeouts per nine during that time. Unbelievable. Helped the Astros get to the playoffs during that time. But ended up signing a four-year deal with the Diamondbacks. Ended up sticking around until 2004. But from 99 to 2004, this was just the stuff of legends. If you're taking a look here, 192 starts. A record of 103 and 49. His ERA during that time was a 2.65. His FIP was a 2.57. He had 12 strikeouts per nine. He had a perfect game in 2004. But most importantly, this guy, not only did he win four Cy Youngs in a row, which is just insane to me, four Cy Youngs in a row, helped the Diamondbacks win their first World Series in franchise history, ended up getting a share of the World Series MVP with Kurt Schilling. Unbelievable. Randy Johnson, let me actually pull up those postseason stats in 2004. Uh, in 2004, or sorry, not 2004, in 2001. Unbelievable. He had three starts during that time. He came out of the bullpen in game seven. Look at his ERA, a 1.04. Are you kidding me? Just unbelievable. Um, ended up getting traded to the Yankees later on. Didn't uh, do as well with the Yankees, but during this time, with the Diamondbacks, just, just unbelievable. I have never seen anything, you know, quite like that. I mean, just so dominant. What a contract with the Diamondbacks during that time. Again, just 
unbelievable numbers. And if we actually take a look at his war during that time, he averaged an eight war. That is insane. He averaged an eight war all the way from 99 to 2004 out of that's that's just mind boggling to me. Um, Randy Johnson, to me, he is the best free agent signing of all time. So that's my list. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. Did I leave anyone out? Would you put someone else in? Tell me what you think down below. But that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.